I have something rather personal to share with you and so it's nice weather so I thought why not join me on a short walk. So I entered the Amsterdam Conservatory when I was 18 years old in the organ class of Jacques van Oudmessen and in my second year Jacques advised me to also add the piano as a main instrument. It was one of the best decisions of uh, that I could make back then, so having this combination organ and piano. And so I entered the piano class of Jan Huizing, at the time a very good uh, teacher, very practically orientated. Um, and so yes, it was a great time. First year I learned a lot. And in the summer break of that first year, so between year one and two, he gave me the Beethoven Sonata Opus 81 a, I believe, that's the Les Adieux with the slow introduction and then you have this beautiful Alla Breve Allegro. Well, and so I practiced that sonata very proud to uh, have been dedicated the, the assignment actually to practice that piece. A big Beethoven sonata in my second year uh, or actually at the end of my first year of piano study and I didn't know the work very well and so it was a complete discovery for me and I enjoyed practicing that sonata really a lot. I still can recall moments of those uh, practicing sessions during that uh, summer holiday. And guys, I wasn't thinking about tempo or anything. Um, I was just playing as I was supposed to play in a conservatory. I mean, I was 21 at the time and from Jacques van Oudmessen's organ class there wasn't a push from him to those students of his who played the piano as a main instrument to talk on tempo issues in the piano class. He was very discreet on that regard. I, I tell you another story later that's very significant for me. So, but when I returned to Amsterdam in September of that year so entering my second piano year and my third, uh, no, fourth organ uh, year actually, I couldn't wait to play that sonata for my teacher because I was really proud and I liked that piece so much. It became very emotional for me. I mean, I was emotionally connected to that piece a lot. And so I played that in piano class. And after three pages, he made me stop. Which was a kind of shock for me. And the more shocking was that... And those are airplanes. You cannot avoid them here. The most shocking moment was that he... The most shockingly of all was that he was laughing. Not in a mean way, but as you would laugh sometimes to your children when they do something silly. I mean, it's with laugh, but still I was shocked, truly shocked, because I loved the way I was playing that piece so much. So instead of asking me why I played it, obviously way slower than he wanted me to play the piece, he just forced me, or he just, not forced me, he just, you know, um, didn't think about even going into a discussion or a conversation with me because obviously it was wrong what I was doing. And, you know, at the time I was a really introvert person. In a way I still am. You wouldn't perhaps think if you listen to the videos <coughs> I'm sorry I was stepping wrong here if you listen to the videos but uh, and me, maybe even not if you would meet me in person I learned obviously to overcome some of that but still here deep down I am kind of introvert person who don't who doesn't like uh, to go to the baker to ask for a uh, bread you know always prefer Anya to do that but anyways at the time there was not 
one hair on my head thinking about going into a debate with my teacher. And also remember that's another generation. I don't even want to calculate how many years it's behind me. And so, yes, I, we returned immediately to the beginning of that Allegro section, playing it faster, obviously with new technical requirements. So my whole pra all my practice sessions over the summer became worthless. Well, not completely, but of course, if you want to play faster, it's obvious that you have to practice in a different way. You have to speed up things in your brain. Um, you have to train your motorical um, uh, movements, the hand-eye brain connections in a much different way. So I was completely lost. So two months of practicing that piece that I sincerely, deeply fell in love with was ruined in five, in what, five seconds. And so that was a really bad decision of my teacher, obviously. I cannot blame him. Well, in a sense I can. Um, he is as many people today in mainstream performance practice as I've learned over the last two, three years, they're completely brainwashed in a way that I'm not even saying, well, that they should play as I think that music should be played, but even having, uh, I mean, you read the comments on the channel sometimes, I mean, just accepting the fact that there might be a different reality, but anyway. So I don't blame him as a musician, but it was a terrible moment for me. I didn't say anything. I didn't um, came back to the issue, but I was really hurt deep inside, really on the edge of crying. I remember that as it was yesterday and still up to today, I haven't played that sonata anymore. I'm sorry if I'm not always watching in the lens. I have a new camera, so I have to get used to that. But anyways, even though I didn't say a word during that lesson, and even though, of course, obviously, I was playing that sonata two weeks later as everybody else did in, the, in that conservatory, and you have to know Amsterdam is one of the great piano schools still today. So there was no way that I could escape from playing that piece as I was told to be played, to, to, to play it. Still, on that moment, there, and I only realized it recently, there, since I was, my feelings were hurt, not for me personal, but towards that sonata, towards Beethoven, I felt miserable because deep down, maybe not even, um, that I knew it myself, but deep down somewhere I felt I was right. And you know, that's right quote unquote, that's my truth. I'm still convinced that the way I've played that sonata in that lesson is very close to what I believe today still is what Beethoven want to express with that piece. And so my feelings were hurt, of course, a little bit personal, but also, and it might sound ridiculous, but also to Beethoven, I felt that I was doing him so much injustice in taking this piece outside of what I instinctively, I think, felt being the context of what he meant with this piece to be expressed emotionally, the story that goes behind the notes, you know what I mean. And that moment, those feelings, they energized me to continue with this. That's the reason that I still today, and of course now with this great platform on YouTube, YouTube uh, have found the energy to share that with you and to hope to hopefully to inspire you and I know Many of you are inspired by this, and that's great. But that moment is, in my life, very significant. Although it was far from a pleasant moment. Um, there are other moments in Amsterdam that followed really short after. I will share that with you in other vlogs like this, because altogether, I, I, I can imagine that 
it makes sense to share this with you to give you a, a background I'll give you some background information on my story how I came to put so much energy in this uh, tempo research which you know tempo is just one factor of performance practice but it's maybe the most influential one um, and you know I've made some videos a few years ago on my story I link them here on screen but this is not included in that uh, it's a very personal moment actually that I thought the moment was right to share that with you okay guys while the Sun is shining is so beautiful here we live in a such a nice environment we we have a little bit to complain perhaps for those airplanes now they're very high that's a military air base and our street has some cars but other than that it's really nice here and so the Sun is shining it's way too hot for the season normally it should be perhaps around five six degrees in November here in Belgium Celsius but anyway let me know in the comments below um, what your reaction is to that moment and if you have encountered such moments in your life because I can imagine maybe in a different setting and in a different way that there are moments in everybody's musical life as a student or as an uh, whatever that you come to question marks and there is an outside source telling you not to listen to your inner voice if that's the case i'm really looking forward to reading that in the comments below and for now i thank you really for listening to this story and you know i'm glad you're here thanks bye